What is up my fellow homeboys? Today I will be showing you how you can mix vocals inside of FL Studio. And it's important to note also that all of the things that I show you in this video can also be applied to other programs. So the things that I do with, you know, the different plugins and stuff can be replicated with whatever plugins that you have, whatever substitute plugins that you have in your program as well. Or you can just do it in FL Studio. So, I'm going to be showing you the way I do it. I am not a professional mixer or masterer or anything of the sort, but I have mixed a lot of tracks for a lot of people, and I think I do a pretty okay job. So, that's what we're doing today. I will be showing you how to mix vocals in FL Studio or any software. Let's do it. Swag money. So, first things first, I have these new headphones, which are pretty dope. They're um, these ones. So hopefully nothing goes wrong with the audio. Also, the song that I'm going to be using as an example that I'm going to be mixing um, is a song that I made with my friend Cyrusin, and it is on SoundCloud. I'll leave a description in the link. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to go check it out. It's pretty good. So yeah, let's get right into this video. So basically, the first step that you want to keep in mind is organization. If you organize your stuff good, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to mix the track overall. So what I mean by that is you take your beat. Here I have the beat for this song, which is produced by me. Uh, and as you can see, it's assigned to track one. Uh, so the beat, I usually always assign it to track one. And then the beat, I usually never put any like effects or anything on it because like the beat's already made. You don't need to do anything else with it. So I just sign it to track one and then pretty much just leave it. Okay, so next what you wanna do is you wanna take like the different sections of the song. You wanna take like pieces of the chorus, pieces of, you know, like the bridge, pieces of like the hook, and then assign those to each of their own mixer tracks. So all the stuff from the chorus is going to be in two for me. Uh, as you can see here, I have this piece, it's assigned to two, um, and it's right here. And then I have the verse, the bridge, and then I have this little piece. And then if you have any other uh, like random clips that you wanna have a different channel of effects on, put that in its own mixer as well. And as I said, I am gonna be using this track as an example, but it is already mixed and mastered and everything, so that's why I have all these effects on it. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this little, little frickin' whatever this is, uh, and then it's gonna turn all the effects off. So here you're gonna hear how the vocals sound with uh, no effects on them. I don't even need your name for the app. Trying to hide the bodies, that's a game for the cops. Too young to feel the pain. So as you can hear, it sounds very dry, it sounds very boring, there's no effects or anything on it, but that's what we're gonna do now. So the first thing that I usually do is I will go to slot one. Don't let any of these effects confuse you. I'm gonna get to them as we go along. Just focus your attention on the top slot. So the first thing I do is I'll go and I'll find pitcher. And then what you wanna do is you wanna find the key of the beat. Basically pitcher is FL Studio's version of autotune. It's not the most amazing, but it gets the job done for sure. So to find the key of the beat, if you made the beat, the key is usually whatever the first chord of the melody is. So whatever the first chord is, it's usually gonna be that. But if you didn't make the beat, uh, there's a few different websites that you can go to. Uh, like just, if you just search like uh, song key finder, you can upload the beat onto there and it'll tell you what key it's in. So that's a pretty convenient tool that you can use. I use it a lot. But since I made this beat, I know that the key is G sharp minor. Actually, I'm gonna turn all of these other effects off. So we just have uh, the one that we're working on. So I'm gonna solo this by right clicking on it. So the other main thing about pitcher that you wanna focus on is the speed. This is like the, the retune speed basically. And it adjusts how f like much like robotic warbly kind of sound you're gonna get. So if I put it to medium and play it. I don't even need your name for the app. It's not that noticeable, but if I put it all the way up, you're gonna hear it. I don't even need your name for the app. You can hear kind of more warbliness. So it all just depends on your preference, what you want uh, in your song. So if you want more of like a Travis Scott kind of like super auto-tuned, you know, feel, then put it up to fast or, you know, faster. Uh, and then if you want kind of a more natural sound, but you just want the, the vocals to stay in key, uh, put it at medium. And sometimes you don't need auto-tune, but usually like 99% of vocals will have auto-tune on it. And for this one, I'm just gonna keep it at medium because it's not really like a super auto-tune-y kind of song. 
So the next thing that I do is I go in and add an EQ. So I'll select uh, the Parametric EQ2, which is a super good EQ. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I will um, click Control and then select this area of the song so it keeps like repeating. Got everything to gain. I don't even need your name for the I think we are the same, right? Yeah, you really f So now I'll just be able to loop it in the background while working on the EQ. I think he might have edited it a little bit before he sent it to me, but um what I usually do with my EQ is I'll play it. I don't even need your name. I'll look at where the frequencies are, and then usually what I do is I'll take this little thingy up here, bring it down. I don't even need and then cut out as much of the bass as possible. And then I don't even need your name. I'm gonna bring this low mid up like this. I don't even I'm gonna take this across and I'm gonna frequency sweep for the area that sounds like really muddy and kind of gross sounding. I don't even need your name for the up. Trying to add anybody's this game for So kind of right there is where I'm gonna cut it. So I'm gonna bring it down. And then I'm going to take this knob here and cut it like that. And then I'm gonna take this two and I'm gonna just boost this kind of whole area. And then I don't even need your another area where I can cut is I don't even need your name for the app. Trying to add anybody. Like right there. So I'm gonna bring that down too. And I'm gonna do the same thing that we did with the, the three. And go like that. And then I'm gonna boost it a little bit. And then usually it depends on the song, but a lot of times you wanna boost the high end because it gives it more of like an airy, uh, like breathy sound. I don't even need your name for the app. Trying to add it. And then I'll boost kind of the high mid area a little bit too. I don't even need your with EQs, you don't want to go crazy. If you cut out too many frequencies, it's going to start sounding really weird and it's going to start sounding all unprofessional and you don't want that. So with your EQ, less is more. But the next thing I do is I will go in here and I will click Fruity Compressor. And I am not an expert on compression. I basically just do what sounds good. But basically what I do most of the time is I'll take this threshold, bring it down to maybe like like 28-ish kind of that area and then I'll bring the ratio up I don't even need your name for the app. until it sounds kind of like flat it sounds kind of like compressed you know and then I don't even need your name for the app. we can bring the gain up I don't even need your name for the app trying to hide bodies it's a game for the cops too young to feel the pain and then I'm gonna bring the attack up just a little bit I don't even need your name for the app I don't even need your name for the app. And as you can hear now, it sounds a little bit cleaner. So basically what a compressor does is it compresses the audio. The high parts, it brings them down, and the low parts, it brings them up, and everything's kind of just like whoop, you know? So yeah, usually what I'll do next, I will put a sound goodizer on it. And the sound goodizer, you kind of just want to play around and listen to what sounds good. Um, normally, I use C. I think C kind of sounds I the best. I don't even need your name for the app. Trying to add bodies, it's a game for the... I think this time I'm going to go with B because I think B is sounding better to me right now. And then with the sound goodizer, you just want to bring this little knobby thing. Uh, you want to bring it down pretty low. You don't want to have too much sound goodizer or otherwise it's going to sound like... I don't even need you. Like it's going to sound like really thick and really weird. Um, so yeah, just a little bit of sound goodizer is all it takes. So next what I do is kind of a little bit of a complicated thing, but it's going to make your track sound really professional. What you do is you go in here, you find the delay too, and then you're gonna want to listen out for how the delay sounds good with the beat. It's hard to explain, but basically, if you listen, I don't I don't even need you. Need you. That sounds kind of like muddy. And what you want to do too is you want to turn on the volume and the cut too. I don't even need your name for the app. So basically when you're adjusting the time, you want it to be spaced out enough to where it like kind of fills in the gaps a little bit of the silence, but it's almost like not too noticeable. But trust me, if, if your timing is off with the delay, it's gonna be really, really weird. So it might take a little while to find a good um, space where the delay is gonna fit in. I don't even need your name for the app. Trying to add anybody's a game, game for the cops. For the cops too. too young to feel the pain. I got everything to gain. 
for this song, that right there sounds good to me. It's kind of got a good, like, almost like a bounce to it. But it's kind of muddy, like the delay is playing over the actual vocals, and you don't want that. You want the delay to be behind the vocals. So, what you have to do is a little bit complicated. Go into, usually I put it at the bottom, like slot 10 or slot 9. Go to Fruity Peak Controller, and now what you're going to do, you can X out of this. You want to click on the volume knob of the delay. You want to right click on it, and then click Link to Controller and then internal controller. For me, I have a lot of these, but you're not gonna see this. You're probably just gonna see one, and whichever one you see, click on peak. But for me, I'm gonna click on the one that uh, the mixer is called. So chorus, take, blah, 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 blah. I'm gonna click peak. And then what you're gonna do next is you're gonna go to where it says input, and you're gonna click on that little drop down and click inverted. And now you click accept. And now what it's gonna do is it's not gonna play while the actual vocals are playing. I don't even need your name for the app. As you can see, the volume on the delay is kind of spazzing out. What it's basically doing is it's turning off the delay when the, the actual vocals play, and then it turns them back on when there's nothing playing. So it makes it like, it's kind of like a reverb, like echoey sound. It's basically just a way that you can get a good, nice, good, clean delay on your vocals. So next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of reverb because you never wanna have your vocals be completely dry as far as reverb goes, but you don't wanna have too much reverb because it's gonna sound like just kinda unprofessional. So you can go into whichever one is underneath the, the delay. Um, and then you're gonna want to, and this also depends on how you, you just want your vocals to sound. It's all kind of subjective, but what I do a lot of times, I'll bring the wet way down because you don't want to have it too like wide and like crazy. I don't even need your name for the app. Trying to add bodies, that's a game for the cop. And that should usually be good. And so now we pretty much have the chorus finished. But the last thing I usually do is I'll add a little bit of stereo, as you can see down here, just to kind of widen it up a little bit and set it apart from the verse. Now that we have that taken care of, the chorus is pretty much finished. So this is what it sounds like with the beat. I don't even need your name for the as you can hear, Sounds a bazillion times better. Sounds like it was done in a professional studio by a professional mixer. So yeah. So the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna move on to the different pieces that you have, the verse or bridge or whatever pieces your song has. And obviously, like I said, it depends on the song, but a lot of times I'll like to have the verse a little bit more like focused in and front and center and the chorus a little bit more wider and have more kind of like reverb and effects on it and stuff. But what you can do so that you don't have to keep redoing the compression and EQ and pitcher and what, whatever, all that stuff process, uh, is you can right click on the chorus or whichever one you just did and then go file and then click save mixture track state as, but click and drag and then drop into the next channel. So now you have the exact same effects as the other one. And all you have to do is right click and rename it to verse or whatever other section you're doing. So now there's just a few things that you need to change so that's back to normal. Stereo, I'm gonna turn back to the middle. I'm gonna go over to the verse. So with the verse, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the sound goodizer to A because it just gives it a different sound, a different feel. Hear rumors, rumors assuming why'd you, why'd you even bother asking. asking? So yeah, I think that sounds good. Also, we're gonna have to do if you copy the mixer track state over is you're gonna have to reset the delay. So this peak controller, you're gonna have to right click, link to controller, and then click whichever one that this is in. So it's gonna be verse, and then you're gonna go and do the inverted thing again, except and now the rumors assuming why'd you even bother, bother? That will be set up too. So that's like kind of a pain, but that's better than having to do the compressor, the sound goodizer, the EQ, the pitcher, and all that over and over again. And for the most part, this will be like pretty much the exact same, but there's certain things that you can do to make it kind of stand out uh, differently. You can turn the reverb down even more. You can turn the delay down even more. Like I said, you can do uh, the thing with the sound goodizer. So yeah, there's a few things that you can do to set it apart from the chorus. Kind of everything else is up to you. It all kind of stems off the way that you mix the first one because you don't want your different pieces of your song sounding too different. You want to have it all kind of be pretty uniform except for certain changes. Basically what I did with the bridge is I went to the pitcher and I turned the uh, 
retune speed up a lot faster. So it has a lot more reverb, a lot more of that wobbly robot sound. And then I added a chorus, um, which gives it kind of like a wider, like, you know, echoey kind of feel. And then the other thing that I did, which is kind of a like more creative thing, was I went in here and I put a guitar rig on it. Yeah. Tell me how I feel. So yeah, basically that's what I did too. Um, and the guitar rig made it sound really cool and like rock star esque. But yeah, that's like, obviously that's a super optional thing. It just depends on your song and how you want your song to sound. But yeah, pretty much for the most part, that's it. Another thing that th this song didn't have, um, but a lot of songs will have is ad-libs. And one thing I do with my ad-libs is I make them very stereo. And then I also turn the reverb up a lot. And then I also, one of the last things I do, I'll show you on the, this empty mixer track, is I'll take an EQ. And then I have this preset, uh, this telephone preset. It's called a bandpass filter. It cuts out the high end and it cuts out the low end. Uh, and yeah, basically it makes it sound like a telephone. And I think that sounds really good for ad libs, but obviously it's all up to your own preference. Like pretty much everything here is, if you want something to sound a certain way, you can change it and have it sound however you want. And then I think the final thing before I wrap it up is the master. Uh, what I have in my master is always a soft clipper. It's literally just you click on the soft clipper and do absolutely nothing. And then I put a multiband compressor. And what I do with the multiband compressor is I, multiband compressor, and then I go to this little presets and then I click on mastering 2.4 decibels and then I turn the limiter off. And now what you can do is you can adjust this gain so that you don't have a lot of like muddy, grainy kind of sounds coming through. And if, it, if you want it to be louder, you can turn it up more. And if it's right there, to me it sounds kind of muddy, so I'm gonna bring it down a little bit more. I don't even need your name for the and then right there, it sounds pretty much perfectly fine. So now all you have to do is literally just export it and then you're done. And then there's certain other things I have here, as you can see, like just different like automations and stuff. It's good to mess around with that stuff. It's good to mess around with like, you know, turning certain EQs off. Right here I have a Panomatic, which basically pans the sound from one side to the other and it gives it a cool effect too. Basically, it's really important to just be creative, to play around with stuff, take your time, learn your style, learn what you like, learn what sounds good, and you'll be perfectly fine. So yeah, basically, I hope this video helped you out. I hope you will now be able to mix uh, whatever tracks that you wanna mix. I hope they sound nice and professional. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And also, I will put a link in the description to a playlist of songs I've produced, along with my Instagram, SoundCloud, and blah, 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 blah. All that stuff as well, if you wish to check that out. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you next time. I don't even need your name for the app. Trying to hide these bodies, it's a game for the cops. Too young to feel the pain.